you are welcome back. If you are coming across my channel or my lecture for the first time, please don't forget to subscribe so that you don't miss my upcoming videos. If you are a returning subscriber, I say thank you and God bless you. So, branch accounts. In today's class, I'll be examining the cost plus a fifth percentage markup. Cost plus method or marked up method. Under this method, the head of the head office invoiced goods to the branch at the cost price plus a fixed percentage markup. Meaning that the invoice price of the goods, the invoiced price, which comprises the cost price plus percentage marked up. This markup will represent the profit logic. So when you add the cost price plus markup, you get the invoiced price. This is the invoiced price. That is the selling price. This is the price at which the head office issued the product or the goods to the branch. So the cost price is usually taken to be 100%. The markup could be any percentage. Let us say you have 20% at the markup. Therefore, the, uh, the invoice price will be 120%. Take note of that. I've told you that the cost price is always 100%. The markup, that is the profit loading, the profit that will be added by the head office could be any percentage. So it could be 20%, it could be 10%, it could be 11%, it could be 25%. So under this method, head office invoiced goods to the branch at cost price plus a fixed percentage marked up. So this markup represents the profit element added to the cost price. If it cost the head office this amount and the head office added a certain percentage to represent their profit, therefore the invoice price of the product will not be the cost plus markup equal to this. The knowledge of markup and margin will, is relevant here. Please don't forget the double entry principles. The double entry principle will still serve as the modulus of R&D of this topic. So, what are the accounts required under this method? Accounts required. The following accounts shall be maintained under this method. Number one, we have branch inventory accounts. Remember, inventory is an asset. It's an asset. And uh, all transactions in this account will be kept at the invoiced price. Meaning that you are going to record everything into this account at their invoiced price. Remember, inventory being an asset account, increase in inventory, you debit it. Debit increase. Any item that will lead to an increase in inventory, you debit it. And you credit anything that will lead to decrease or reduction in inventory. So anything that leads to reduction or decrease in inventory, you credit them. And anything that leads to increase in inventory, you debit it. Debit increase in assets and credit decrease in assets. So that is the principle. I will still give you the comprehensive double entry principles. Please, I want you to follow me so that you'll be able to understand it. Number two, branch marked up accounts. Branch marked up accounts or branch adjustment accounts. Branch adjustment accounts or profit loading accounts. Profit loading accounts. As the name implied, marked up. That means the profit element. I've told you that marked up is the profit added to the items. Meaning that the profit element will be recorded in this account. Only the markup is what we are going to record into this account. The profit loading 
on the branch transactions will be recorded in branch markup account or branch adjustment accounts. Number three. So meaning that this account performs the same function as a trading accounts. Since it performs the same function as trading accounts, that means it is an account where you are starting the gross profit of the branch. So it means you prepare this account to ascertain the gross profit. So that is the purpose of this account to ascertain the gross profit. Number three is branch. Uh, let me say goods sent to branch accounts. Goods sent to branch accounts. This account records the moment of inventory between the head office and the branch. It records the moment of inventory between the head office and the branch. So all items in this account will be recorded at the cost price. Only the cost price of the items is what we are going to be recording in this account. Nothing should be at the invoice price. We only record the cost of the items into good sense to branch account. It shows the movement of inventory between the head office and the branch. Number three, uh, number four, branch receivable ledger control accounts. This account shows the movement of items between the branch and the branch customers. Meaning that only the items that occur or that take place between the branch and the customers will be recorded in this account. Remember the double entry principles. You debit the receiver and credit the giver. So that principle still holds here. So everything we are going to be recording, uh, everything, every account we are going to keep under this method must be in line with the principles of double entry. Then number five, branch expenses account. This account records the expenses of the branch. Finally, then we have the branch profits branch, let me say statement of profit or loss. So, this is the account where we are setting the net profit or loss of the branch. So, you prepare this to ascertain the branch net profit or net loss. So, these are the accounts that will be required under this method. Now, having given you the accounts required, let's look at the double entries or the accounting entries. How are these transactions and uh, how would they be recorded under this method, accounting entries? Remember, I've told you that accounting entries, I've told you that everything must be in line with the principles of double entry, which states that for every debit entry, there must be a corresponding credit entry and vice versa. That is the principle of double entry. Now, accounting entry, number one, we have the opening balance. Opening, let me say, balances. Opening balances. Then you can have the opening balance in relation to uh, inventory. So, where you have the opening inventory, let me say opening inventory. Opening inventory. So, Inventory is the first item that will be recorded in the branch inventory account. So you debit branch inventory accounts. Don't forget, I've told you that every transaction in the branch inventory account should be at their invoiced price. So that means it is the invoiced price of the item. Invoiced price. 
that will be recorded here. You have it at Balaam brought down. Then, why the profit loading? You credit branch, branch marked up account or branch adjustment account. That is with the markup. That is the profit loading marked up. That is the profit element. So you credit it to the branch uh, adjustment account or branch marked up account or profit loading account. That is for the opening balance. Then number two. Now you've recorded the opening balances. It is possible the head office might send might send the head office might send some goose to the branch. So we have goose sent to branch by head office. We are head office send goose to the branch. When the branch receives the goose, branch will include that items in their inventory. And since it will be included in the inventory of the branch, what will happen to the inventory of the branch? It will increase. So I've told you that item that leads that leads to increase in inventory. I said that should be debited to the branch inventory account. Since the inventory of the branch will increase when the branch receives goods from head office, so you debit uh, branch inventory account. Remember, I told you that everything in branch inventory, I said, should be at the invoice price. At invoice price. You've debited good sense to, I mean, you've debited branch inventory account with the invoice price of the item. Then you now create it. Good sense to branch account. Good sense to branch accounts. Remember, I've told you that all transactions in good sense to branch account, I said they should be kept at their cost price. So that means the amount that will be recorded will be the cost price of the item. So you credit good sense to branch with the cost price. We have the item are sold at profit. The invoice price will be more than the cost price. So, the profit element now. So, you want to agree the total amount you have at the credit side. You want it to agree with the amount you have at the debit side. See, the invoice price will be more than the cost price. We have goods are invoiced at profit. Then, to balance the credit side with the debit side, then you have the profit loaded here. You, so, you credit marked up, branch marked up account. Branch marked up account with the profit loading that is with the marked up with the marked up of the items so you credit branch marked up account with the profit loading that is for good sent to branch number three we have goods returned to head office by branch. It is possible the branch might return part of the goods received to the head office. Goods returned to head office by the branch. When the branch returns part of the goods received to the head office, so what will happen to the inventory of the branch? It will reduce. I've told you that since it will lead to reduction in inventory, you are going to credit the branch inventory account. Remember, I've told you that all the transactions in the branch inventory account, I've told you that they will be recorded at the invoiced price. So in that case, you debit Goods return to head office by the branch. Inventory reduces. You credit branch inventory account with the invoice price. You debit goods sent to branch account 
Remember, everything in this account should be at the cost price. If you are having the cost price at the debit side, which is less than the invoice price, that means you will need to debit branch marked up account. Branch marked up account or branch adjustment account with the profit loading. Profit loading or profit element, which is the marked up. Then you now credit branch marked up account or branch adjustment account with the invoice price. Branch marked up account. That is branch adjustment account with the marked up and uh, with sorry. You credit branch inventory account. Sorry. You've debited who sent to branch account. With the cost price, you've debited branch marked up account with the marked up of the goods. Then you credit branch inventory account. At what price? I want you to answer that. At what price? The invoice price. Invoice price. Since everything in branch inventory account will be kept at their invoice price. Number four. Goods. Returned to branch by the branch customers. We have the customers return the goods to the branch. Customers becomes the giver. Now with the double entry principle, we credit the giver. So that means the receivable ledger control account will be credited. Then when the branch receives the goods back from their customers, then they will include it in their inventory. The inventory of the branch increases. So you debit branch inventory account, account with the invoice price. You credit a branch receivable ledger control, that is your sales ledger control account. Or debtors ledger contractor with the invoiced price. Number five. Having considered the goods returned to the branch by the branch customers, one will consider the goods returned to head office by branch customers. It is possible the branch customer might not return the goods directly to the branch, they might decide to return it to the head office. So we have goods returned to head office by the branch customers. It's the customers that return this to the head office. Remember the transactions between the head office and the branch has been kept via goods sent to branch account. So that means this will affect goods sent to branch account. Customers is the giver. You are going to credit the receivable ledger control account since customer is the giver. Then branch is not receiving it into stores this time around. It is the head of it that is receiving it. That means the goods sent to the branch, the head of it will treat it as if it were returned by the branch to them. And if the branch wants to return that goods to the head office, the branch will return it at the cost price. So in that case, you debit goods sent to branch account with the cost price of the items. Remember, all transactions in goods sent to branch account should be kept at the cost price. Then you debit branch adjustment account. Or branch marked up. Another word for branch adjustment account is branch marked up account. That is with the marked up. That is with the profit. Then you now credit branch goods branch branch customers account, which is branch customer is the giver. You credit the giver. Credit branch receivable, ledger 
control account with the invoice price of the item. Remember, the cost price plus markup equals to the invoice price. Take note of that. With the invoice price, that is number five. Number six, cash sales by the branch. Cash sales. We are brass goods in cash. Cash sales by the branch. Cash sales by the branch. Remember, cash is the amount received. Now, you are receiving cash. So, you debit branch cash book. Branch cash book or cash or bank account. Then you credit. When branch sells goods, the inventory of the branch will reduce. Since the inventory will reduce, you credit the branch inventory account. When branch sells goods, their inventory reduces. So you credit branch inventory account with the selling price. Number seven. Now we want to consider credit sales by the branch. Credit sales by the branch. Credit sales by the branch. Credit sales now. Credit sales have to. Since it hasn't been paid for, if you have fed the receivable ledger control account. So customer is the receiver of the goods. Debit the receiver. Debit receivable. Ledger control account or no the receivable ledger is an asset account. Increase in assets should be debited. So you debit the receivable ledger control account. Then inventory reduces when the goods are sold. So you credit branch. Let me add branch to this so that it will be branch receivable ledger control account. Credit branch inventory account. With the selling price of the item. Number eight, check or cash received from branch customers. Check or cash received from branch customers. Check or cash received from branch. Customers. You see from customer, branch customers is the giver. Customer is the giver. Receivable ledger control account is the giver. Credit the giver in line with double entry principle. You debit cash or bank account. Debit cash book. Debit branch cash book. Credit branch receivable ledger control accounts. Number nine. Number nine, we have cash discount allowed. They have discount allowed. Discount allowed is an expense. So with the discount allowed being an expense, so it will occur, it will be recorded as an expense. At the same time, it will affect the receivable ledger control account. So you debit discount allowed account, discount allowed account, or debit branch expenses account, and credit branch receivable. Ledger control account. Number 10. Number 10. Then let me have bad debts written up. Bad debts written off. Bad debts is also an expense. So you debit bad debts account. Account or you debit branch expenses account, 
and credit. It has to do with customers too. The credit branch receivable ledger control accounts. Number eleven allowance of selling price. Allowance of selling price. So you are going to credit branch inventory account, the debit branch marked up account. Branch marked up account. Remember I've told you that branch marked up account is the same as branch adjustment account. You credit branch inventory account. Number 12. Number 12, we have branch expenses paid by the branch. Branch expenses paid by the branch. So you debit branch expenses account. And you credit branch cash book. Number 13. Number 13. Cash stolen at the branch. Cash stolen. Cash stolen at the branch. Cash stolen at the branch. So where cash are stolen, the amount stolen. That amount, the amount which was stolen at the branch should be written off in the profit or loss. So you debit branch statement of profit or loss as an expense. Then you credit branch inventory account. Number 14. Goose stolen. Goose stolen at the branch. Goose stolen at the branch. Where goods were stolen at the branch, you credit the branch inventory account with the inverse price of the goods. You debit branch profit or loss, branch statement of Profit or loss with the cost price of the goods. You also debit branch marked up account or branch adjustment account with the marked up or the profit element. Then you credit branch inventory account. With the profit, uh, with the invoiced price, with the invoiced price. Number fifteen, you have a closing inventory. Uh, close. Let me say closing balances. Closing balances. So you can have closing inventory. This will be credit, you credit branch inventory account, account as balance carried down. Balance carried down, not debit with the invoice price. Invoiced price. Then you debit branch adjustment account or branch marked up account with the marked up or profit loading. Then closing receivables. Closing receivable 
balance credit receivable ledger control account account the difference between the debit and credit side of branch adjustment accounts will represent the gross profit. And if you have any difference, any difference, I mean, in the branch inventory account, it could represent deficiency or surplus. Deficiency or surplus. Example, our money go marshals appraised from a head office in Sakwele and a branch in Wari. Goods are sent to the branch at cost plus markup of 25%, which is the sell, which is the which is the brand selling price. The following are details of Wari branch transactions for the year ended June 30, 22x. Opening inventory at branch at selling price 50,000 naira. Goods sent to branch at selling price 450,000 naira. Goods returned to head office by branch at selling price 45,000 naira. Goods returned to head office by branch by branch customers all at normal selling price 10,000 naira. Credit sales 300,000 naira. Cash sales 96,000 naira. Authorized allowance, allowances of selling prices, 4,000 naira. Goods returned to branch by branch customers at selling prices, 20,000 naira. Check or cash received from branch customers, 200,000 naira. Card discount allowed to branch customers, 10,000 naira. Bad is written off. 8,000 naira. Branch sundry expenses paid. 25,000 naira. Car stolen at branch. 5,000 naira. Goods stolen at branch at selling price. 15,000 naira. Closing inventory. Closing inventory. At branch at selling price. 55,000 naira. You are required to show the necessary accounts in the ledger of head office to record the transactions of the branch using cost plus markup method. This question is obtained from a financial accounting made simple by Robert O. Ibe. Now let's have the solution. A morning go marshals. Appraised from a head office in Sakwele and a branch in Wari. Goods are sent to the branch at cost plus markup of 25%. So I've told you that the cost price is always 100%. Cost price is 100%. And you are given the markup of 25%. That means the invoiced price will be 125 percent so to determine the cost of the item you have cost will not be cost will be 100 over 125 25 in 100 that is 4 25 in 125 that is 5 which is 4 over 5 that will be the cost price why the markup mark up which is 25 over 125. 25 over 125. 25 in 25, one. 25 in 125, that is 5. So that means the markup will be 1 over 5. Cost will be 4 over 5. Markup is 1 over 5. Or if you don't want to reduce it to its lowest form, you can use 100 over 125 to determine the cost price and 25 over 125 to determine the markup or the profit loading. So you want to record the necessary account. Now let's open the branch inventory account in the ledgers. Entries in the 
Lagos or head office. I want to know that it is the head office that we record, that we keep the account of the branch. So we have branch inventory accounts. Branch inventory accounts. Debit side, amount in Naira, and credit side. Back to the question. We have opening venture at branch at selling price 50,000 Naira. I've told you that the opening inventory will be debited to the branch inventory account as balance brought down. And the amount involved is 50,000 Naira. Then you are going to credit branch marked up account or branch adjustment account. Branch adjustment account. Remember, I've told you that you may call it branch adjustment account or branch marked up account or profit loading account. So you are going to credit branch adjustment account as balance brought down. Remember, the profit is 1 over 5. Or 25 over 1, 2, 5. 1 over 5 times 50,000 naira. 50,000 times 1 it will be 50,000. So, right by 5, that will be 10,000 naira. That is for the opening inventory. The second item is goods sent to branch at selling price. I've told you that for the goods sent to branch, I said you debit the branch because the inventory of the branch will increase. You debit branch inventory account with the invoice price. So, goods sent to branch. You debit branch inventory account with the invoice price. You credit goods sent to branch account with the cost price. You also credit branch adjustment account with the profit loading. So, the two accounts. We are going to credit now. Let's now divide this one into the two accounts. Goods sent to branch account. No goods to sent to branch is 4 over 5. Or 100 over 125. 4 over 5 times how much is the value of the goods? The value of the goods is 450,000 naira. So the cost price now. 450,000 times 4 divided by 5. So the cost is 360,000 now. The profit loading now, which is branch adjustment, which is 1 over 5 or 450,000. That will be 90,000 naira. Now the two, the sum of these two, 360,000 and 90,000, that is totaled 450,000. That means you are recording the invoice price in branch inventory account. So you are therefore going to credit the branch, the goods sent to branch account. Let's open goods sent to branch account. Goods sent to branch account. Let me use this place. Goods sent to branch. Account. So you've debited branch inventory account. You are going to credit goods sent to branch account with 360,000. The narration will now be branch inventory. Since the debit entry is in branch inventory account, 360. Thousand being the cost of the goods, then the profit element will now be recorded, will be credited to the branch adjustment account. So we have branch inventory since the debit entry is in the branch inventory account 90,000 naira. Then we've recorded this and this. The third item is goods returned to head office by branch. 
at selling price. Goods return to head office. Head office is the one returning the goods now. When the head office returns it, branch will receive it. Upon the receiver of such goods now, the branch will include it in their inventory. So, goods return to head office. I mean, sorry. It is the branch that returns it, I mean. Since the branch is the one returning it now, it is going out of the branch inventory. And since it is going, goes out of, going out of the branch inventory, the inventory of the branch will reduce. So I've told you that item that will lead to reduction in inventory will be credited. So you credit the branch inventory account. So with the invoice price. You credit it with the invoice price. Then you debit goods sent to the branch account with the cost price. And you debit branch adjustment account with the profit loading. So the two accounts we are going to record now. Goods. So it is goods return to head office. Goods sent to branch. The cost price will be 4 over 5 times 45,000 naira. 4 over 5 times 45,000. That will give us 36,000. Then the second account is branch adjustment account. Which is 1 over 5 times 45,000. That will give us 9,000 naira. 9,000 plus 36,000 will give us 45,000. You have credited branch inventory account with the sum of the two, which is 45,000 naira. Then you are therefore going to debit goods sent to branch account. So we have branch inventory with the cost of the goods, 36,000 naira. 36,000 naira. Then the profit element now you debit the branch adjustment account. So your narration with the branch inventory, since the credit entry is in the branch inventory account, and that amounted to nine thousand naira. Then we're done with this. Goods returned to head office by branch customers. It is the customer that is returning the goods this time around. So that means. It will affect the receivable ledger control accounts. So you credit receivable ledger control accounts with the invoice price of the goods. Then you debit uh, goods sent to branch account with the cost price of the goods. And you debit the branch adjustment account. So with the profit loading. Now, the cost of the goods. No, we are dealing with Goods returned to head office by branch customers, all at normal selling price ten thousand. So we have branch receivable, receivable ledger. The cost of the goods is four over five times ten thousand. Then the profit loading branch four over five times ten thousand eight thousand naira. That is the cost of the goods. I've told you that goods sent to branch account, you are going to record it at cost. Since I've told you that everything in this account will be at the cost price. So the profit loading now will be debited to the branch adjustment account. Receivable ledger. One over five times ten thousand, which is two thousand. Eight thousand naira at the debit side in the good sent to branch account, plus two thousand naira at the debit side of the branch adjustment account. That will be total ten thousand naira. So this invoice price is 10,000. We are going to credit branch receivable ledger control account. Now let's open branch receivable ledger control account.
So, good sign to branch. 10,000, uh, 8,000 has been debited to good sign to branch accounts. The branch adjustment account. 2,000 has been debited to branch adjustment account. Two third is 10,000, being the invoice price. Then credit sales. Credit sales. We have fed the receivable ledger contract account. So customers is the receiver of the goods. So you debit branch receivable ledger contract account and you credit branch inventory account. CC inventory will reduce. So we have credit sales. Sales. That is branch inventory. 300,000. So you credit receivable ledger. I uh, mean branch inventory account. We have credit sales. 300,000 naira. Then cash sales. Cash sales will be debited to the cash book. Cash book is the receiver and the inventory is the giver. So cash sales. Inventory of the branch will be reduced. So that is why we are crediting the branch inventory account with the cash sales. Then we have authorized allowance of selling price. Authorized allowance of selling price, 4,000 naira. So after you, that will be credited to branch inventory account. Allowance of selling price, 4,000 to be credited to branch inventory account and debited to branch adjustment account. Allowance of selling price, 4,000 naira. 4,000. Then, we have goods returned to branch by branch customers. It is the customer that is returning the goods now to the branch. So, Customer is the giver, and branch will receive it and include it in the inventory. So with every branch inventory account, I will credit receivable ledger contract account. Branch receivable ledger control account, and the amount is 20,000. I will credit receivable ledger control account. Branch inventory twenty thousand naira. So we're done with this. Check or cash receipt from branch customers. Customer is the giver. Cash or check is the receiver. You debit the cash book and you credit receivable ledger control account. So cash. Or bank, or simply put cash book, and that amounted to two hundred thousand naira. Then we also have cash discount allowed to branch customer ten thousand naira. Uh, you either record it in the branch expenses account, you either debit the branch expenses account, or you debit the discount allowed account, and you credit the receivable ledger control account. So, cash. Discount allowed ten thousand naira. So now let me debit branch expenses account. Branch expenses account. Have discount allowed ten thousand naira. Then we also have bad debt shooting off eight thousand naira. You credit the receivable ledger contract account. Bad debts. I told you that anything that will lead to reduction in, in receivable ledger balance, you credit it. Where you have bad debts. The receivable ledger balance will reduce. 
with the amount of bad debts. Since you are writing up that debt, the amount owed by the customer will reduce. Since certain amount of the debt owed by the customers can no, can no longer be recovered. So you credit the receivable ledger control account with the bad debts and you debit branch expenses account. Bad debts written off 8,000 naira. 8,000 naira. Then we also have brand sundry expenses paid 25,000. With the sundry expenses paid, you debit branch expenses account. Sundry expenses paid 25,000 naira. Then you credit the cash book. Then we also have cash stolen at branch 5000 naira cash stolen so you debit branch you write it off in the profit or loss so by debiting the branch profit or loss and you credit the branch inventory account cash stolen 5000 naira the profit or loss will be debited will be written off then goods stolen at branch at selling price with the goods stolen, we said you credit the branch inventory account with the cost of the goods. You debit branch profit or loss. I mean, you credit the branch inventory account with the invoice price. You debit the branch profit or loss with the cost. And debit branch adjustment account with the profit loading. So we have uh, branch, let me say, goods stolen. The cost of the goods, which is 4 over 5 times, and the total value of the goods stolen is 15,000. So this will give us 12,000. Then, branch adjustment. Branch adjustment with the profit loading, 1 over 5 times 15,000. That will give us 3,000. No 3,000 plus 12,000, that is 15,000. So you debit profit or loss. This is written off in the profit or loss. You debit branch adjustment account. So our branch adjustment account, branch inventory. That is good stolen. Stolen of 3,000 naira. So. The 12,000 will be written off in the profit or loss. Then, closing inventory at branch at selling price. The closing inventory, after that, will be carried down to the credit side of the branch inventory account. Balance carried down. That is 55,000 naira. Then, the, branch, the profit element, the profit loading, will be carried down to the debit side of branch adjustment account balance carried down profit loading one over five times the value is fifty five thousand times fifty five thousand so that will give us eleven thousand now let's total this we want to balance our ledgers 50,000 plus 360,000 plus 90,000 plus 20,000. The debit side is totaled, 520,000. The debit side of the branch inventory. So now the credit side, 36,000 plus 9,000 plus 300 plus 96. Plus three nine six thousand plus four thousand plus five thousand that is nine thousand five thousand plus three thousand that is fifteen thousand plus fifty five thousand the credit side is total five twenty thousand so the debit side agree with the credit side we have five twenty thousand so it balance five twenty 
the balance carried down here will be brought down here. So we have balance brought down 55,000. That is your closing inventory. That is branch inventory accounts. Then branch adjustment account. The credit side is total 100,000. Now let's add the debit side. 9,000 plus 2,000, that is 11,000. Plus uh, 4,000 plus 3,000, that is 7,000. Plus 11,000. The debit side is total 29,000. If you now subtract it from 100,000 plus 100,000, then you have 71,000 as the difference. As the difference. That difference of 71,000 is the gross profit. This gross profit will be transferred to profit or loss. So, your balance carried down here will be brought down to the next period, which is 11. That is branch adjustment account. Our receivable ledger control account. The debit side is 300,000. Now let's sum up the credit side. Eight thousand plus two thousand, that is ten thousand, plus twenty thousand, that is thirty thousand, plus two hundred thousand, that is two thirty thousand, two forty thousand, two forty eight thousand. If you have 300,000 minus 248,000, you have the difference of 52,000. That is the closing balance. Balance carried down. 52,000. So you have 300,000. Your closing balance will be brought down. So we have 52,000. That is the receivable ledger. Control account. We close this. We close this. Then we have closed the inventory. Then goods sent to branch account. We are going to the different. We are going to have it as purchases, which will be transferred to trading account. Let me just say trading We have three sixty thousand. That is 6,000 plus 8,000. That is 44,000. If you subtract it from 360,000, then you'll be left with 316,000. That 316,000 will be transferred to trading account. 360,000. 360,000. Three sixty thousand. That is good sent to branch account. Then branch expenses account. Ten plus eight, that is eighteen. Eighteen plus twenty-five. This is total forty-three thousand. That is branch. Profit or loss forty three thousand forty three thousand. Now they have branch statement of profit or loss. Then a gross profit from the branch adjustment account. Gross profit is 71,000. So we brought it down. Gross profit brought down 71,000. Then our branch expenses 43,000. Branch Expenses forty three 
thousand. Then we have car stolen, which should be written off profit or loss five thousand. Our cash stolen. Cash stolen. Five thousand naira. Then we also have goose stolen. Twelve thousand naira. Goose stolen. Twelve thousand naira. So now, if you add this, forty-three thousand plus five thousand. Plus twelve thousand. This is total sixty thousand. If you subtract it from seventy one thousand, seventy one thousand minus sixty thousand, then you'll be left with eleven thousand. That is our net profit. Net profit. So seventy one thousand. Seventy-one thousand. So that is the end of the solution. Please don't forget to like the video, also share it with others, and subscribe if you have not subscribed. Thanks for watching, Ezekiel.